Hello there. Over the years, Blizzard have had several swings at trying to find a source of repeatable gameplay for what are often described as the casual players. That is, players who don't engage heavily with the traditional three pillars, rated PvP, raiding, or Mythic Plus. While we've always had the open world as a kind of fourth pillar, the long-term repeatability of open world content isn't there for a lot of players, and complaints about having nothing to do have been around since vanilla. So this is obviously an area that Blizzard sees is important, especially in the modern era where we tend to get a huge spike of players at the launch of an expansion, many of whom quickly leave as their chosen type of content runs out for them. The first big attempt at this was Scenarios back in Mists of Pandaria, which had a decent reputation at the time, but was never repeated. And of course, since then we've had things like Island Expeditions and Warfronts in BFA, which were widely disliked, as well as Torghast in Shadowlands. With that kind of record, it's fair to say that Blizzard have struggled with this type of content. For the War Within, Blizzard are making a fresh swing with a new type of content called Delves. And the big question I think many of us have is, have Blizzard learned enough from the past attempts to make this one be the one that lands and becomes the fourth pillar? Well, let's, as shall we say, delve right in and see. So what are delves? Delves are small instances. They're about a third to half the size of a typical dungeon, and they're tuned for solo players or for role agnostic small groups of two to five players. And therefore, they do have some passing similarities with previous systems like BFA's Horrific Visions and Torghast. There are 12 delves in total, all of which offer different environments, mechanics, and challenges. The best way to describe a delve is genuinely as a mini one-boss dungeon. The interior environments are very dungeon-like, being typically set inside buildings, temples, or caverns. One difference with dungeons is that there's less emphasis in fighting your way through waves and waves of trash, and instead more on quest-like exploration mechanics. What this means in practice is that ad packs are smaller and more spread out, and while some delves do ask us to kill specific mobs or fill a bar by killing trash, others ask us to collect items placed around the space or to negotiate little maze-like jumping puzzles. Now, if you're not a fan of maze or jumping puzzle games, don't worry, as the routes are very clearly signposted and the mechanics to help you negotiate are in typical World of Warcraft fashion, very easy to do. After completing the main objectives, each delve invariably ends with a boss to defeat. The variety of objectives is very scenario-like, and I mean both the old Mist of Pandario scenarios and the more modern open world quest versions, and in fact, it's fairly obvious that Delves are using the scenario tech under the surface. And if I was to sum up the overall feel, it would be that they are a fusion between a dungeon and a Mist of Pandaria style scenario. Even if you are solo, you don't have to be completely alone though, as you will be accompanied by Bran's Bronzebeard. Bran has a little three slot talent tree and you can select him to take on a DPS or healing role. As well as you helping fight, Bran also has a bunch of utility. For example, if your health gets too low, he'll set out a campfire that you can eat from. Bran also levels up over time as you collect XP items throughout the delves. Now, in testing, Bran honestly wasn't very impactful, but the devs have responded to that feedback, assuring us that he will be beefed up a bit. I certainly hope this is the case, as systems like this, which allow us to effectively acquire power over time, do very much improve the experience of game modes. Delves come with a total of 11 levels of difficulty. Level 1 and 2 are designed for leveling up, with level 3 being for max level play. There are no entry requirements for any of these levels. Level 4 and above will not be available until the first season of The War Within opens up in September the 10th, and these are clearly positioned as the seasonal progression content. Accessing level 5s and above will require that you complete the previous level without too many deaths. And how many is too many? Well, starting at level 4, the runs have a death counter with a limited set of lives. This starts at 5 lives in level 4 and drops to 3 on the higher levels. Currently on the beta and also in Blizzard's publicity for Delves, 
The only punishment for running out of lives is reduced reward. Getting to zero lives does not end the run, nor does it reset progress. Now, in the latest beta build, the tooltip for the death counter has been changed to say that we would retreat on hitting zero lives, but that really doesn't seem to do anything when I tested it. It's not clear if this is a bug or if Blizzard are planning to change to have a hard limit in the future. If they do change to a hard limit, I will add a note in the comments to this video, but let's hope they don't. The delves are intended to feel different from run to run with different objectives and hazards. There is also an affix based system with a mysterious foe, Zekvia, who provides boosts for random enemies in the counter. Unlike Mythic Plus affixes, this is not a universal, so for example, there is scope to try and avoid the buffed enemies. What about rewards? Throughout the delve, you'll find treasure purses, chests and puzzles, and even rare enemies which grant gold, XP for Bran, and even Torghast-like anima power skill-ups. Those skill-ups are intended to be bonuses though, and not mandatory for completion of the delve. Upon defeating the final boss, Bran leads you to a little treasure room where there are a few chests and gold piles to loot for yet more gold, XP for Bran and cosmetic rewards. There is also a chance of a special elite chest. Opening this chest will require a key which you can collect from other content. This will open up the gear reward. Delves will also contribute progress to the Great Vault with a brand new row dedicated to open world content and delves. There's also a progress bar system that allows you to collect even more rewards over the course of a season. Finally, there's the new Delve Mount. This is a mechanical dirigible that you will earn early on, but which can be customized in a similar way to the Dragon Rider mounts in Dragonflight. Now, in terms of gear rewards, this hasn't been fully implemented on the test realms, but Blizzard have said that the gear will top out at heroic raid levels. So that's hero track gear with the level 8 and above delves all giving you the best gear. This means that levels 9 to 11 are more focused around the doing the challenge and the bragging rights. There are, as you would imagine, a bunch of achievements for these higher levels. Completing level 11 within the death counter will also unlock the mysterious 13th delve. This is going to be a single boss encounter at a much higher difficulty, similar to the Mage Tower. Now, Blizzard have said it won't quite be that hard as it's a single encounter for every class, but they do want to tune it to get it as close as they can to those types of difficulty. So that's basically all the key features of Delves. But gaming is all about the feels. So how do Delves feel to play? The first Delve I ran, Fungal Folly, didn't hugely excite me. I was playing in a protection paladin and the progress felt too slowly paced with sparse enemy packs which took a long time to kill. Moving on to do some of the other delves though and the good news is that things started to improve for me a lot. The second delve I did, Kriegwell's Rest, felt a lot better paced and it definitely did grow on me. Going through each delve in turn, they all do feel noticeably different, which is a good thing and I would say that overall I've enjoyed the majority of my runs. On the test realm, we are scaled to the recommended item level for the difficulty that we choose, so it's very hard to give an accurate view of the difficulty or indeed how that difficulty will progress over time. Doing the delves solo on the Protection Paladin, which is my main class, and in which I normally do heroic raids in Mythic 10 level dungeons, I found that they did give me a moderate challenge. I would die once or twice most runs, but I was able to complete the majority within the death counter. There were three or four delves that I did struggle with, even in the lowest level of difficulty, but that to me felt more like a tuning issue with those particular delves, as they were so out of whack with the difficulty I encountered in the rest. This is of course quite normal for testing and I'm confident that Blizzard will have data on the lower success rates for those delves and that will prompt them to retune these down a little. Now I will say I have seen feedback from some other people in some other classes such as Shadow Priest saying that they had a much worse time difficulty wise which does make sense. I did have to focus on surviving on my tank spec, so specs with low self-sustain may have a much stiffer challenge. That said, that's also something that I'm pretty sure that Blizzard will put some effort into smoothing out. 
For me, the biggest strength of the Delves are their variety. One of the many issues with island expeditions, for example, was how shallow and repetitive they felt. And that is definitely not the case here. There is genuine varied gameplay and real challenges to overcome, and defeating the Delve often does feel very satisfying. There is obviously a question if this can be maintained over the full duration of an expansion, but the early signs are at least very positive. Now, as we know, Blizzard have had a bit of a history with this type of content of producing something that has a lot of potential and then completely ruining it by designing the rewards in a way that leads people to feel forced to play not only that particular game mode, but also to engage with it in ways that harm the overall experience. There's no doubt that the decision to tie Torghast to Legendary Acquisition, for example, blighted something that otherwise had a lot of potential to be a lot of fun. And for me, the first few weeks of the horrific visions back in BF8 were truly horrific gameplay-wise. With Delves, Blizzard do seem to be putting in a lot of effort to avoid that forced-to-play effect. Beyond cosmetics and achievements, and the gear rewards are just gear gear that you can get from any other content, and this is emphasised by the inclusion in the Great Vault of its own role. Now I do think that high level players will probably end up doing delves in the first couple of weeks of the season, either for an extra vault slot or to try and farm some filler gear for their main campaigns, but that's honestly no different from world quests or rares at that time in the expansion. Once those players start getting better gear from Raids and Mythic Plus, they will soon reach a point where Delves will feel irrelevant to them. What this means overall is that I think Delves are probably going to feel much more like a kind of optional content that you'll either choose to do because you prefer to get your gear that way or because you're chasing cosmetic rewards or achievements. There is, however, one potential issue. To throttle the best rewards, the chests that contain them are locked behind keys that will drop from other content. Now, every time Blizzard have tried this mechanic, in my view, it has always made the content worse. The keys for Horrific Visions made the BFA 8.3 content all feel very forced, and having to farm rares to get the Zyskera Vault keys in 1007 permanently poisoned the experience of the vault for me. A lot will depend on how we get the keys though. If it's a weekly allowance that drops from any content, or maybe from the weekly Aid in the Accord equivalent quest, it may not feel too bad. But if it turns into another, well, you have to farm the rares, or you have to do certain world events, and well, I doubt I will be doing delves for very long myself if that's the case. We haven't seen the drops for the keys yet in beta, so this is for now just a fear from myself having been burned in the past by Blizzard. Hopefully they have learned enough that they can navigate this potential landmine and it will turn out okay. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The feedback I have for Blizzard though is that key-based systems have never worked well in World of Warcraft and I would prefer to see the developers look for an alternative way to throttle the gear. Delves are integrated into the Great Vault, and with the different levels of difficulty, there are a lot of similarities with how Mythic Plus work. The Mythic Plus reward system has proven its mettle over multiple expansions, and I cannot help but think that a Mythic Plus-like system where Delves have a chance of dropping end-of-run gear with every run, and the best gear coming from the vault once a week could actually work very well here. Delves will be quicker to do than Mythic Plus, but the end of run drop chances could be tuned around that. The key system, to my mind, just adds complexity and risk to the overall experience of Delves, and in my opinion, that's completely unnecessary. There is one thing I am fairly certain about, though. Battle for Azeroth, in my opinion, had the best open world slash casual gear and progress that the game has ever seen. And one contributing factor to that was due to the way that Warfronts offered a heroic piece of gear every two or three weeks or so to players who were willing to at least join a group, but without all the performance pressures of Mythic Plus or heroic raiding. Assuming that Delves are well-tuned and live, they should offer a similar opportunity 
for many solo and open world oriented players to work their way up to getting heroic level gear. It will likely be a little more challenging. Warfronts after all were accessible because they were so easy, but without the social pressures that come with the harder group content, these will still be very accessible for many players who normally wouldn't go into that type of content. This all creates the potential of offering satisfying long-term progression for a segment of the player base that has, in my experience, not really been very well served at all in the last two expansions. Overall, delves as a game mode have a lot of potential. The 12 delves offer varied challenges and gameplay that for the first few weeks I think will appeal very broadly across the player base. I do suspect that players who currently play the main seasonal content at mainstream and higher levels will quickly outgrow delves, but delves are arguably not really aimed at that segment of the player base, and I think that's perfectly fine. For solo-oriented players who are looking for more meaningful gear, power progression, or even just harder content than is the norm for solo play, delves do have a lot of potential, much more so than Blizzard's previous attempts in this space. Whether that will hold in the very long term remains to be seen. Part of the replayability of raids and dungeons comes from the social aspect. Solo content is always going to have to work harder to retain player interest as a result. Now delves can be done in groups and I suspect they will also appeal to a lot of people who prefer to play with one or two close friends. In fact, in many ways this is where they are likely to shine most brightly. Of all the swings that Blizzard have taken to fill this gap in World of Warcraft, Delves, I think, have the most potential to actually succeed. As always, it is going to be the reward systems that will make or break it. Requiring those keys to access the best rewards is a major, in my view, and necessary downside risk. But there is still a path where Blizzard can make this work. I just hope that's the path that they have taken. But what about all of you? Are you a solo player wishing for the glory days of BFA gearing? Or have you had enough of plugging Mythic Plus and hope that Delves could give you another way to get some progression? Let me know in the comments down below. If you have found this preview interesting or useful, do let me and YouTube know by hitting that like icon. Over the coming weeks, I'll be releasing more content previews and guides for The War Within, so make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified when those videos go live. Subscribing is by far the best way to support new channels like mine. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.